The Peel District School Board is located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Let us be thankful for the natural world. Be mindful of the steps we take and remember to slow down and appreciate all that surrounds us. Popcorn the Snake, feeding time with Mr. H. Brought to you by the Peel Field Center Instructors. So this is a corn snake. His name is Popcorn. This is his terrarium, his little habitat. Taking off the lid because we're gonna bring him out and feed him. So I'll just point out a couple things. There's a heat lamp here. Uh, snakes are ectothermic, which means they rely on an external heat source to regulate their temperature, unlike birds and mammals. So he likes his heat lamp, but he's able to move around in here and find his own little microclimate that makes him happy. Also, underneath the sand here is a heat blanket and that radiates heat up through the sand. So um, he has a very large terrarium, can move around a lot, and right now you can see he's over the water because they do like to drink water. So I'm gonna bring him out. I'm not concerned because I know Popcorn very well. He's 11 years old and he's about a meter and a half long. Corn snakes could, could range from about a meter to two meters long. And they're very docile, meaning they're not aggressive. That's why they're often um, purchased as pets because they're, they're excellent pets. They would probably live about 10 to 15 years in the wild, um, but in, in captivity, they can live up to 23 years. So they're not native to Canada. Um, we, we do have many snakes in Canada, but corn snakes are not from here. They're from the southeastern states, like Florida and some, some other central parts of the United States. Um, but you can buy them here in Canada. And uh, I've had popcorn for 11 years. So I suppose you could say he's, he's middle-aged. Okay, so I'm going to uh, bring him over to the floor where I like to feed him. I don't like to feed him in the terrarium because there are little wood chips in here. And if I put a mouse in there, which I'm going to feed him a mouse, they can get uh, caught on the fur of the mouse and then we wouldn't want the snake ingesting the wood chips. So I'm going to do it on the floor. Are you ready for this? So I've taken the mouse out of the freezer because that's where we keep them. They're, they're in a box in the freezer, frozen. I have it in a bag right now and I'm submerging it in hot water. And I'm leaving it in here for about seven minutes in order to thaw because obviously the snake is not gonna wanna eat a frozen mouse. So that's how we do it. I'm gonna take him out. I'm gonna cut him out of the bag. Yes, it's maybe a little sad to see a mouse like this. The reality is snakes are carnivores. I can't feed it carrots. I have to feed it meat. And this is, this is how we do it. I don't get them from the wild. I go to the pet store and they, they sell them in, in boxes of four. And it's very easy to keep these in the freezer. So I'm gonna drop it down and we're gonna see what happens. Now you might be noticing it's pretty large and you could notice that the body of the mouse is actually bigger than the corn snake's head. So just imagine for a moment, if you were to eat something bigger than your head, could you eat a basketball? I don't know. Okay, here we go. Popcorn hasn't eaten in about 10 days. Well, I have a feeling he's gonna really jump at this mouse because he's probably hungry. that he's 
smelling the mouse. And oh, here we go. So what makes a snake able to eat something that is bigger than its own head? So this is a question I pose to you. What's unique about snakes is they don't have eyelids. They do have a cap over their eye or what's called a spectacle, which protects their eye. But they actually don't have eyelids. They, do, they don't have ears either. They do have a good sense of smell and they have this ability to eat things larger than their own head. So that is a very interesting adaptation. Again, imagine eating something bigger than your own head. So you're gonna to get to see it here, but I'd like you to try to understand the anatomy of a snake's skull and how they're able to do this. So as you can see now, popcorn is walking the mouse into its mouth. Snakes do have teeth, now this is not a venomous snake, so it doesn't have fangs, but it does have teeth, and they're mostly all the same size, but these are not chewing teeth. These are teeth that will guide the mouse in, but they're not chewing teeth. All their teeth, again, are relatively the same size, and they're good for, for grip, but not for chewing. So as you can see, popcorn is eating the, the mouse whole. popcorn doesn't have arms, so can't use cutlery, can't use claws, has to find a way to bring the walk the mouse into its mouth without the use of any anything else, any hands. Could you imagine eating a big thing larger than your mouth without using your hands? He's actually doing a great job at this because that's a pretty good sized mouse. So unlike us, that generally eat throughout the day, maybe have three meals in a day, popcorn will probably not eat again for a week. And he'll have to digest everything, the fur, the bones, the nails, the teeth, every single part of the animal. And they can do that because they have very strong digestive juices. So he's set for another week. I hope you enjoyed watching that. 
It's kind of exciting if this is the first time seeing a snake eat a mouse. It's pretty wild, but it's not gory. It's interesting, isn't it? Did this video make you wonder about anything? We want to hear from you. Let's connect soon. Thanks for watching!